All righty. Hello, everybody. My name is Devin Anderson. I'm the owner of Sage Organic Marketing. I am beyond excited to talk to you guys about a topic that, as I've said before, is near and dear to my heart, organic social media marketing. So many, many businesses don't know the benefits that social media marketing can have for their business. Social media marketing only became a thing in the early 2000s. So it's only been a couple decades of learning how this can benefit your business for sales, for reputation, for relevance. This is going to be something that you can utilize years and years and years down the road as we continue evolving and learning how these platforms can benefit you. So how can you stay relevant as more and more companies jump onto these platforms? You can use these platforms. Many of you, I'm sure, don't have profiles on any of these social media platforms, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Now is the time to hop on and make sure that you are taking full advantage of what these platforms can do for your business. <laughs> you can use it to the full potential by learning, like you are today, what these platforms can do all the tools that you can utilize and then we can go dive even deeper to see how it's going to make sure that those sales come through your customer journey is accurate and easy for them to follow so that's why we're here let's talk some social media today so a little bit about me like i said my name is devin anderson i'm the owner of sage organic marketing I went to school and majored in this topic, not social media specifically, but I double majored in marketing and business management. This topic has been something that I have been passionate about for years and years and years. I specialize in organic social marketing, so it's not going to be paid advertising. We're going to focus on community-based decision-making on these platforms. So it's going to be content creation, scheduling, what you can do to utilize the entire platform to create an online community that's going to want to help you, to want to support you, who's going to be a referral base on these online platforms for you. So if you are constant on these platforms, someone's going to be like, hey, I saw a post about this. This might benefit you if you're looking for the specific thing. You want to stay top of mind. You want to stay consistent. And that is what organic social media marketing is going to do for you. All righty. So we're going to stay relevant, right? We're going to stay consistent. Nowadays, if you are not on social media as a business, do you exist? If your last post was over two weeks ago, two months ago, are you still in business? The biggest thing you can do on these social media platforms is stay consistent because it shows to your audience that you are showing up for them. What can you teach them? What can you show them about your product? Do you have events, sales? Anything new coming up in the business that your audience needs to know about. These are things that social media marketing is going to help you do in the long run because of how you show up for them. When I'm looking for a service or a product, I immediately go to their social media. I want to see, is the product being made here locally? If it's a service, am I going to enjoy the environment that service is going to be? For example, a massage. Is that room sanitary? Is that room going to help me get into a relaxing state? These are all things that your customers are going to want to know before they decide to choose you over a competitor. For example, if I wanted to go and get my hair done, I want to see pictures. Did the cut look good? Did the color look good? I want to visually be able to see that what you are telling me you can do you can actually provide. So that's what the social media platform is going to do for you. You're going to be able to show them exactly how you can support them and why you are the choice above your other competitors who also use those social media platforms. That's why what you put out is also as important as being consistent. What are you going to be able to do to show them that you are the choice? All right, so let's get into it. Content creation, one of my favorite things to do. There are many, many platforms out there that you can utilize to create the content that you're going to publish. My personal favorite is Canva, not only because there's both a free and a paid option, but because it is so user friendly. There are a lot of graphic design projects and programs out there that can be a little more difficult and you need a little more training to better understand to put out a polished product. Whereas Canva really helps you simplify the product, the project, and how you get there at the end of it, really. So what I love to do with Canva 
is be able to bring in different ways that your business marketing, your branding is really going to help you when you get into this program. So let's start a video here that I created that hopefully is going to play maybe. Hopefully, yes. Okay. <laughs> so what I love about Canva is you can really just use so many different tools. There's designs that they've already created for you that you can tweak to your branding. So if you are not creative at all, if you're an analytical person, you don't like to create things, that's going to really benefit you. That said, I would be very I wouldn't use that too often because you don't want what you put out to be too similar to your competitors or what other people might be using if they are just going to be using those designs that Canva has already created. The free version is going to limit you on what you can use. The crown means that it's a paid option. So if you do have the paid version, then you're going to have access to everything. It is pretty cheap compared to other programs. So whether you do the free or the paid version, you're going to have a lot to work with. So with Canva, you can do videos, you can do animated graphics, you can change the font to your branding, the color. There's a way that you can put your branding in a section of this that when you put in a new design, it automatically changes everything to make sure that it's to your branding. I absolutely love that. It makes it so much easier and it's going to benefit you in the long run. When you are creating for Instagram, I highly recommend using 1080 by 1080 or 1080 by 1350 pro products. So this is a 1080, 1080, because if you use a horizontal um, pixelated image, you're losing a bunch of that space when people are scrolling on your Instagram. So the longer the image, the better, because Instagram's gonna think that your audience is staying on that image longer than they might be because they're scrolling. So again, you wanna use pictures, videos that are going to take up more of the screen. So try not to use horizontal images if you can. You can also, like I'm doing in the background, change the colors. You can use little graphics. What I love to do is it gives you an option to comment on the image. So if you have a caption that you've already had in place, you can put it there as a reminder of what you're ready to put in for the social media platform itself. So you can use different graphics. What I really love is the photos options. There's a lot you can do with the photo options as well. So if you wanted to just pull it in, you just drag it to a corner and it's gonna fill up the whole back end. If you pull it into the middle, it won't fill in the entire thing. So make sure that when you are trying to decide what you're doing with that photo, you know how to implement it. So again, if you wanted to fill up the entire back, try to put it in a corner. If you want it to just be in the middle, like I just did there, you don't want it to be um, in the background. So one of my absolute favorite tools with this is background remover. So a lot of times in the past you've had to go in and, and manually try to erase the background and that can just be such a pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit background remover on this image that I implemented here and it takes away the entire background just like that. And if for some reason it doesn't do everything that you wanted, for instance, let's just say that I didn't like to have the whole person in the bottom down there, we're going to go in there and we're going to edit it. You can erase certain sections. So right now I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit down some of the exits, the stuff down here. By the brush size, there you go. It's going to go away. Just like that. How easy is that? I know. <laughs> I absolutely love that tool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I said, I have so much love for this platform. Yes. Uh, we have a question. Is the background remover on the paid version only? That's a great question. I think that it is for both free and paid. All right. That's a great question. Thank you for asking it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to just take some stuff back. That's my branding right there. But then you also can do videos. I love videos because you love to animate. You want to take people's attention. The content you're creating, you want to make it eye-catching because you want to be remembered. You want to be relevant. So one of my favorite things to talk about is the different topics that you can do when you're content creating. Are you going to have something specific to your industry or are you going to do something broad? So a lot of the content is going to be very industry specific. What are you providing? What are you doing? But the ideas themselves can be pretty generic. If you wanted to do testimonials, 
That is such a great way to tell people, hey, people use my product, they use my service, and they liked it. And that's very visually easily, easy for them to see. You can also do educational posts. This is one of my absolute favorite things. How can you teach them about your services, your products? For example, vocabulary. If you are in an industry, for example, a lawyer, and there is a lot of vocabulary that many people wouldn't understand, and you're using that in your content, Posting a picture about that word itself and describing it and using it as an example, you're trying to educate your pe the people who are going to be using your service so they also trust you. If you're hiding things, if you're trying to use big words to confuse me, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, I might not trust you as much. So being able to educate your audience is really going to be beneficial in the long run. So open-ended posts are one of my absolute favorite things to do. If you have a post and you just say, put your questions in the comments, this is a great forum for them to, again, put their question. You can answer in a public space so if other people see this question and have the same question, they already get the answer. One of my absolute favorite things to do. And then, of course, you want to share about you. You are the face of the brand. You are what they are going to see, who they are going to be supporting. Why should they support you? Why should they choose you over a competitor? People want to see you. They want to see your, your vision, your mission. Why are they choosing you? That is so important. Are you going to talk about your day-to-day -day life? Are you going to say something like a big thing that you just did that was successful? You want them to, because there's so many profiles out there, right? There's so many people, so many profiles. What makes you a human? What makes you a person? How can I relate to you? That's really what you want to show them. And then, of course, you can hop on trends. Trends, <laughs> I, I love and hate trends, to be honest, because it's so hard to catch on to them sometimes because they're in constant loop. They're in constant creation. And they're going to be constantly changing. So if you can't stay on top of those, you, you got to find a way to because they're going to be changing as you go. They change day to day. Right now, again, a lot of the trends are going to be industry specific, and unless it's an audio or kind of dance. But right now, industry-wide looping videos are really being honed in on. It's been used before, but a lot of people are really focused on that right now. So what I do like about looping videos is it will play over and over again before your audience recognizes that it's been played over and over again, which then will help your impressions, your analytics, and see Instagram show you that your algorithm is working in a way. So we love looping videos. So if that's a trend that you've seen, now you know why. All right, so let's do the next thing. So scheduling content. I really wanted to show you guys a video of the back end of Facebook Meta Suite about how to schedule, but a lot of my clients are on there, so I couldn't really show you to that. But what we can do instead is talk about how to use Facebook Meta Suite. So there are many, many different platforms out there you can utilize for these kind of scheduling platforms. There's Hootsuite, Sprouts, Buffer. There's many, many out there, but many, many of them are expensive. They are broader and have a lot of tools to them versus Facebook Metasuite, which is free, by the way. Um, it just does limit you in what you can do. But I'm trying to give you guys options that are not as expensive so you can focus on other things. So Facebook Metasuite is my favorite thing to utilize. It will focus on Facebook and Instagram because a lot of times what you want to do is you want to connect your Facebook page to your Instagram so you can post to both at the same time. What I really love about Facebook Metasuite, other than the fact that it's free, is the, <laughs> the fact that you can... Um, upload very quickly from Canva. Canva. If you remember on the video that I just showed you, I labeled each of those Canva graphics Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So when you download it, it's super easy to be like, okay, that day goes here. This graphic goes there. So when you're downloading from Canva, just make sure you label it so you know when it's supposed to go and be published so you're not going back and forth. But Facebook Metasuite, and if you have a computer in front of you, this would be really great for you to just go look it up. It's business.facebook.com and play around with it because this tool will greatly help you schedule and limit your time instead of going in and specifically publishing each post because that can take time. It lets you do the content. It lets you do the 
So the graphics, the copy, the hashtags, you can tag people. So if I wanted to do a post with the San Diego Chamber of Commerce, I could tag them. It doesn't let you do collaboration posts. I'll talk about that later. But this is a great free platform to take away some of the time that you've been putting in by posting it manually. Again, you'll be looking through your camera roll and all these different things. This takes away a lot of that. All right, let's talk about the next thing. So I talked about this in my last presentation with you guys, and I think it's just so important to talk about again. You want to use all aspects of the platform. I was telling some of the San Diego Chamber members earlier that I am so upset that they took away guides as a tool on Instagram. It was one of my favorite things to utilize, but we can use other things. So we can do hashtags, reels, collaboration posts, stories, and then stories has so many things that you can do alongside that. So this is where using everything is important because a lot of people go in and be like, I'll just do a post. That's it. You can use some hashtags, you can do whatever, but if you wanted to do the research, if you wanted to fully use the impact of these platforms, this is what you want to do. You want to use every single aspect of the platform. Don't forget anything. So let's go to the next thing. Micro and macro hashtags. So hashtags are important. These are like keywords on your um, profile post, and it looks like it's a little blurry. Hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better than I can over here. Um, but for example, SD small biz, do you think that is a micro or a macro hashtag? Macro is really big. A lot of people have used it. So there's a lot of posts underneath it. Or micro, not a lot of people have utilized it. What do you think? Micro? Yeah, it's micro. Not about 1,000 people have used that hashtag. So you want to use both. You want to use macro and micro. So micro, small biz. Macro support local. I think I put this down. Yep. 49.6 million posts are under support local. So, of course, that's a very generic, very sought after you hashtag, but you have to remember if you're putting all of these macro, you're going to get lost in the weeds. You're going to get lost in all these posts. So, you want to use both. You want to be able to show up in both macro and micro. So, make sure when you're doing research, you're looking to see which hashtags are going to benefit you the best. You also want to make sure that you're not using the same hashtags over and over again. A lot of times I see before a client works with me, they'll use a set paragraph of hashtags and they'll copy and paste in every, every post. And that might work for a little bit, but if you use a post too often, you are going to get shadow banned from that post. You're going to put it on your post and you will not be shown under that hashtag because you've been banned. Yeah. Can you explain shadow banning more? Yeah, great question. So shadow banning is when you use a hashtag too often. Instagram thinks that is pretty much like scamming. So you're spamming people. So by using that post too often, you are pretty much just banning yourself from that hashtag. You can put it on your, your post, but you will not show up underneath that hashtag at all. So just make sure that you're rotating your hashtags, you're finding new hashtags. You don't want to use the same ones every time. Any other questions about hashtags? <laughs> No. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, so reels. Video is so important, you guys. I cannot tell you how important it is. I always push my clients to work on video content. It is the hardest kind of content to get because it takes the most work from clients. But remember just how much that's going to help you in the long run for your algorithm. With reels, you can do audio captions, you can do music, written text, you can do filters. A lot of times the filters you use are going to be important because you don't want to look too tacky, but it depends on the branding. If you're funny, you can use a lot of these filters, but a lot of times you don't want to. You want to be very specific towards your branding. So they have the option for these filters, but just remember how to use them. Again, you have these options for captions, polls. I love this because in the past, you used to have to manually write down what you said. This is going to transcribe your audio for you immediately. And you can see it just pops up right there, what I'm saying. And what I like is you can go in and you can change what it says. So if they spelt my name wrong just because that's usually how Demon is spelled. But you can go in and make sure that it changes so that words are spelled correctly, what you said is put in there correctly. So make sure when you do use these caption options, you're reading through and making sure what you said is actually what you said. 
but I love this tool. Absolutely love it. And then you can see that I wrote hello at the top. I'm going to throw that away for now, but you can type, you can text, you can use all of these different platforms in the real section, which I love. So remember to use reels. Yes. Can you explain editing the captions again? Yeah. So when it audio is transcribed, it's going to automatically put it in there for you. If you just click on one of the words, it'll do that drop down that it showed you earlier, where you can go through every single word, every comma, everything like that, and make sure that it's specifically what you said. Great question. All right, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> okay, I love collaboration posts. This is one of the newest tools I think everyone should be utilizing this as much as possible. Collaboration posts. So in the past, you could just tag them and it would show up under their tags in profile. But now what you can do is you can have a collaboration post where when you hit collaboration, it is gonna show up on both profiles once that other profile has accepted it. You can't just push product onto another person's profile. They have to accept it. So make sure you're in communication with them so they know what's going on. But a collaboration post, and you'll see I just did the San Diego Chamber as a tag. We don't want that. We want to go into collaboration. And then it's going to give me that option again for the San Diego Chamber. If I hit click that, once I post, it's going to go on both my business page and the San Diego page once they accept it. This broadens your um, audience because you're getting both my audience and the chambers. And it's showing that you're working together on something. So this is also about community. This is about events, all of the above. I love, 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 love this new part of the platform. Any questions on collaboration posts and how those work? No. Okay, great. Let's go to the next question. Or not question, next topic. I love stories, you guys. This, <laughs> this part of the platform I absolutely love. What I do want to remind people of is when you post something, you can share that to your story. So it's being put on different parts of the platform. So once you post, in your profile, make sure to also share that to your story. So if people are just watching stories and they're not going through your feed, they're gonna see that there as well. This is also going to help your impressions. Impressions are super important along with the views. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about analytics. But again, just like Reels, you can do location, you can do polls, you can do a mention, you can ask me a question and those answers are gonna go strictly to you. So you're the only ones who can see those and you can share them if you want. So are you having fun? I hope you all are having fun. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. And then, of course, you can do a poll. You can do a link. There's so many different things that you can do to help your customer journey be shortened because attention span these days is very, very short. With videos, you got about seven seconds to capture someone's attention. If they're jumping from one link to another, you're going to lose them before they get to their final destination. So make their journey as easy as possible. And of course, we love social media. So if, yes, and of course, there's no wrong answer there. Mm -hmm. But again, using all aspects of these is going to be beyond important. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you've lost an opportunity by not putting a clickable link because Instagram's post, you can't have a clickable link. It doesn't happen. But if you share that post to your story and you add a link, now this helps the customer journey. They go from point A to point B faster than they would if they just try to copy and paste or search it up online. So again, the best you can do for your customers is getting them from A to B as fast as possible because then they don't lose interest and you don't lose a sale. So what are we learning about today? Social media. My dog's cool too, but we'll talk about social media today. <laughs> but... So all of these can benefit you in some way. I wouldn't recommend doing them all in one story just because you don't want to distract people and confuse them, but you can use them in different ways, which I love them all. Countdowns are a great one. If you have an event coming up, make sure to use a countdown because it can remind them if they say they want to be reminded. So you can be giving them reminders if they go as if you post it. You can also do reminders on posts as well. So make sure that you're using that tool to the fullest extent. All right, we can go to the next one. <clears throat> Engaging, okay. I cannot tell you how important this is. You can put up as much content as you want, but if you are not willing to put in the time to connect with your audience, you're gonna lose them. Responding to comments, liking other people, they're, 
what they post, how they communicate with you, this is how you're going to really be able to turn an audience into a customer. We're gonna like people's posts. We're gonna show both the algorithm and our customers that we're willing to put time and effort into other people because it's not just about us. Instagram is a form of communication. It is not for me to tell you, it's for us to talk about it, right? And the best way to do that is having these online Organ, like these online communications, relationships, this is really what's gonna take you to the next level. You're gonna comment on other people's stuff. You're gonna, again, respond to comments. If you have a bunch of comments that are not responded to, people, why should they comment? You're not gonna get a response. So make sure that you are putting in the effort to show that, that you care. Yeah. Sometimes I see businesses commenting on popular Instagram accounts or popular celebrities posts. Does that actually help? Unless they're collaborating with them, I would not suggest it. You're just going to get lost in the comments. Yeah. Any other questions? That's a good question, though. Perfect. Yeah. So let's respond. Let's like their stories. I love being able to like stories because that is a whole other thing that people haven't really been doing. If you like a story, you're going to pop up at the top of their story views. And they're going to be like, this person's interacting with me. This person is looking at my stuff. Because likes and comments have been so consistent, liking a story is new. They're gonna be like, oh, who is this individual? Who is looking at this? This is a huge part of the platform that a lot of people don't utilize and can definitely benefit you in the long run. All right, next one. Okay, so analytics, this one, you're gonna to have to pull out your phone and follow along but I think it is super duper important to talk about. So when you're on your profile page, in the top right corner, you're gonna see three lines. Go ahead and get there for me. Okay, we're all there. So you're gonna see insights as an option. Click on insights for me. In the top left corner, you're gonna see last seven days. You can choose last seven days, 14, 13, and the previous month and the last 90 days. So you can go three months back, yes. It looks like you have to be a business profile to see this. You do. So that's the other thing. What kind of profile do you have? What trial are you in? My insights, my back end may look different than yours because Instagram has many different trials going on. So yours will probably look different. I have multiple clients and they have the likes in a different spot. They have their comments in a different spot. Instagram's trying a lot of different things. So what you have might be different from what I have. It's, that's why it's so important to have trial and error in Instagram. Great question. So now that we're in here, let's just say that we're gonna do the last 30 days. Hit update. You're gonna see your accounts reached, accounts engaged, your total followers, how many posts, stories, reels you were able to do. So let's just say we're gonna go into accounts reached. You're going to be able to see how many non-followers versus followers followed you, how many reels, posts, and stories did, your profile visit, which is important, is what the content you're putting out, bringing in people to your profile. So if that number is low, look at what you're putting out. What do you need to change? What do you need to tweak? And we'll go from there. External link taps. How many people are clicking on your website? That's huge. How many people are actually following you and going to your website to actually become a customer? This is important to look at. So analytics, a lot of people don't look at, a lot of people don't track. I meet with my clients monthly because this is so important. So let's go back to the main page and hit accounts engaged. How many people actually engaged with your content? Your content interactions, and then it breaks it down, post, Story, real interactions. How did you do in each part of the platform? This is all important information to have. My favorite analytic to have is an analytic that Instagram does not do for you. It's called your engagement rate. This number is gonna tell you how many people you reached versus how many people actually engaged with your content. The people that saw it, did they like it? Did they interact? This formula is gonna be likes, comments, and shares divided by reach. So if you're doing it for posts, it would be going into your post interactions and underneath that you're gonna see likes, comments, shares, and saves as an option. Do not do saves in that. It's gonna be just likes, comments, and shares. So add that all up and then the divide that by your post reach. So just the post reach, not your total reach. That's gonna tell you 
how many people are actually converting into people and entertaining what you're putting out there. A lot of times from past research, 11.95% is a good engagement rate. My clients hit way higher than that because we're utilizing all aspects of the platform. So make sure to be looking at that number because if that number is low, you're not doing something that your audience needs to have. Yes. This question was just asked in the chat. Does the business profile have limited music selections? Depends on your trial. Great question. I personally have not seen a whole lot of a change versus the content or versus the business kind of profiles. Um, but I tend to push my clients towards a business page versus a content page. Great question. So any questions on analytics or what you should be looking for? No? Perfect. All right, let's go to the next one. So if you learned everything today and you're like, that seems like a lot, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that myself, that's why I'm here. I offer both self-service, full service, and trainings that if you wanted to go in more depth and do it yourself, you can do that as well. But if you wanted to hand it off to somebody who enjoys the work, because it does take time if you want to do it correctly, this is something that I can offer for you. A lot of, um, from research, on average, businesses pay four to seven grand a month on social media marketing. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's too high. So my prices are much lower because I want small businesses to have access to something that is going to benefit them. I also only have a three month contract in the beginning because I want to see if it works for you. Make sure that it benefits you before you go on to something longer. Any questions about that? Yes. Uh, we had a question earlier, but it wasn't on topic. Um, so what are some of the best hashtags to use for service-based businesses? So do you, should you be, you know, basing your hashtag based on the business itself or just that it is a business? How specific should you get? I would also look at the topic of the post. Is it something educational? Is it about you as a business owner? I would be looking at the hashtags. Again, you want to do both micro and macro, and you also want to think about how many hashtags you're using because along with those keyword hashtags, what you put in the caption is also going to be a keyword. So making sure that your caption is specific. But the hashtags, if you're, let's just say you said service, let's just say going back to a massage, you could use specific like SD massage, San Diego massage therapist. There, you can get very specific, but again, you don't want to be too specific because if someone spells something wrong, it's not going to pop up there. If you put SB instead of SD, <laughs> you're not showing up. So just make sure that you're not putting too much into those hashtags. And we have another question. Are other social media platforms helpful? Is Instagram the best one to start with? Great question. Every platform is a little bit different. I mean, Facebook is going to have a different audience than Instagram. Instagram is the one I tend to push most clients to because it is the easiest for many of them to utilize. And it also is where most people go when they're looking for something. That said, TikTok is very beneficial. It's just very hard for individual businesses to do that because it's so much video content. It's a lot. And I... I have a hard time getting people to do once a week reels on Instagram. So video content's hard to get. And I would only be utilizing TikTok if you're going to be very consistent. So Twitter, it's not going to be visual. It's going to be just your copy. Instagram, you get both copy and images. TikTok, you're mostly video. So it depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to publish. Great question. Any other questions? Can you tell? I'm going to ask the chat. Yeah. And then you can go to the next slide as well. But this is the part where we can open up discussion for more questions, any broader questions than we discussed in the presentation itself. I went a little bit quick because I got excited about the topic, so we got <laughs> <much more nervous. laughs> So if you have questions, go ahead and ask. But um, that was the main topics, yeah. If you have, say, um, an event or a sale coming up, yeah. how far in advance do you think um, you should start promoting it on social media, and how frequently should you promote it? Great question. 
You don't want to do it too far in advance because you don't want people to forget about it. So I would suggest about three weeks in advance, you want to start posting about it, getting people excited. The week before, heavily push it. Make sure you're doing the reminders. Make sure you're doing the links. If you're doing collaboration posts, make sure that you're really pushing in that last week because, again, people have a short attention span. If you post too early, you're going to lose them. If you post too late, they don't have enough time. So make sure you're using those three weeks periodically. Great question. Yeah. Are there any other branding platforms you would recommend in addition to Canva? You know, it really depends on what you're going for. I, I always suggest Canva just because of how user-friendly it is. I mean, there's always Photoshop, Adobe, all of those other platforms, but those can be a little bit more difficult. So I tend to push Canva as an option. Yeah. Someone in the chat said, what does really pushing mean for frequency per day? Yeah, so how many times a day are you posting? How many time, much content are you putting out there? A lot of times my clients will do one post a day, Monday through Friday, and that seems to be enough. I do have one client that does three posts a day because they have so many things that they're trying to put out there. You don't want to oversaturate and get your customers and your audience to be just bombarded with posts. But I think what you need to do is you need to test out your audience. What do they like? A lot of social media is trial and error. What hashtags worked? Did this video work because we're in the right trial? Did this audio work because we're in the right trial? Did my audience like more hashtags, less hashtags? You really have to look and see what your audience wants you doing. Because so, again, this is a communication. This is a conversation. It's not just what I want to do. It's what are you looking for as well? Yeah. We have another question in the chat from Jen Alvarez. So what are your thoughts about using Linktree to advertise your services? Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with Linktree. I think it can be beneficial if you have a ton of different pages you're trying to get people to go to. But again, customer journey, what is easiest, A to B. So if you do have a bunch of events, that, like this event, there was a page for this, sending them right there is great. But if you don't and you're just sending them to random things, I would highly recommend just having your website on there and letting them browse and look for what they're looking for. It looks like um, Yahaira has her hand raised if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, let me lower that. <laughs> thank you so much. This was so awesome. I just want to start off by saying that um, there was a lot of great tips in your presentation that I'm like writing down notes and I'm excited <laughs> to go try and definitely look at my analytics after editing some of my upcoming posts. Um, my main question is, so I am an HR consultant, I have a service-based um, business, um, and I have my Instagram linked to, my business Instagram linked to my business Facebook. Is there any, so I don't actually, because I hate to say this, but I'm never really on Facebook, um, and <laughs> It's just so much easier to link them and so the posts go through. Is there a, a downfall? Like, have you do you do you do that? Um, I don't know. Is, is there is there any feedback that you can give me on that? Yeah, I I love Facebook for the groups. That's a great question. Um, I always recommend trying to do both because you're hitting two different audiences. Facebook tends to be older. Instagram seems to be a little bit younger, but again, Facebook, a lot of their older generation is moving to Instagram because that's where their family members are posting more. So they're starting to get over there as well. But I do think that for now, it is still good and beneficial to post to both. I think that if you can join Facebook groups and be promoting in there, that's where I would be trying to push your products as well in your services because on, I didn't get to show you because of the back end, but when you're in groups, you can also post and schedule your products in those groups as well, as long as the admin's okay with that. So I would be utilizing all parts of the Facebook platform as well. They also have reels, videos, stories, and all of those different other parts of the platform. So just, again, trying to use all parts of that platform to help your algorithm. But that's a great question. How about LinkedIn? Yes, LinkedIn is becoming more and more social. I remember when I was younger, I only went on there to look for job postings, but now it's become more of a social platform for businesses. I think that if you are B2B, 
this is more beneficial to you than Instagram and Facebook. But if you're B2C, I would be pushing Instagram and Facebook more and Twitter, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. What's a, like a realistic and reasonable amount of hashtags? Some people just use one. Sometimes you see a hundred. What, especially if you're switching them out for your posts, how many should you be aiming for? It's a great question. It all goes back to what does your audience want to see? Some of my clients, their audience likes 30 hashtags. It doesn't bother them. Some clients, those hashtags really annoy them. So you have to think about what is your audience thinking of? I also wouldn't on... I would say on average, try not to go over, over 15, try to stay below because again, hashtags are great keywords, but so is your caption. So how are you using, using your caption for those keywords? I also forgot to mention this during the presentation, but try to use a call to action in all of your posts. What is this post meant to do? Is it meant to have them comment in the comment below? Is it to click the link in your bio? What are they supposed to do after seeing your post? Give them an action to complete when they're done looking at that, that graphic. What about threads? I know a lot of people are starting to use threads and um, I don't know if they're using it more than Twitter now, but what do you think about posting on threads or, you know? You know, threads is still so new. I don't have a lot of opinions on it yet, just because I want to give it more time. Um, it seems a lot like Twitter to me. And so if you have a following, you have a base on Twitter, which has more of a background, that's what I would be suggesting. I only have a personal Instagram account, but I'm assuming it's difficult for businesses too to make up a caption for your posts. Do you have any recommendations on how to format that or, um, how to just create it for, and to clearly develop or transmit the message you're trying to communicate? Yeah, great question. I mean, AI is becoming more and more popular. I use it to an extent, but I wouldn't use it fully to create your content. I think a lot of times this is why I come into play because the content, the captions can really take time to create, to really have a kind of substance to them. So it, that's where a lot of the time comes in because graphics can be easy. The videos can come, the posts, the pictures, but the caption's really gonna benefit you. Mm -hmm. Great question. If you could only leave everyone with one thing today, everyone remember one thing from your presentation, what do you think the most important thing you've presented on today is for, for these small businesses? Yeah. Would you trust a company that wasn't on social media? Mm -hmm. that's a good one <laughs> right <laughs> if you're not on social media are you legitimate that is my question if I'm like I said if I'm looking for a massage therapist if I'm looking for a hairstylist I go to see what they can provide to me if they are not on social media I do not go to them yeah because they do not exist to me. I actually do the same thing for like um when I was looking for a job I looked at every job profile to see like do they have like a community yes. are they active um you know is that kind of like a place where I'd want to work Exactly. So um, I've always like looked at their profiles as well. Yeah, exactly. That would be the biggest thing. If you are not on social media, you are losing out on so many customers because to them, you are not relevant, you are not reliable, and you are not real. Great question. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you took something out of this presentation. Feel free to DM me, message me, ask any questions. I will never hide any of my tips and tricks because I feel like everyone should have an ability to use these platforms to the fullest extent. So please feel free to DM me. Again, my name is Devin Anderson, owner of Sage Organic Marketing. Thank you so much.